Welcome to Bible Logos. I'm Deborah Phipps, your broadcast host. Today, I'm excited to bring you part four of Mine, Yours, and Ours. Please do a favor and like and share this message on social media with your friends and family. All right, let's get to the word. Here's part four of Mine, Yours, and Ours. Job said it this way, the Lord giveth and the Lord can take it away. Don't let the Lord take it away. Go ahead and give it away so God can replenish it. The next way that we see this manifested, that God's plan for us is to experience life together, is that they were all involved. They were all involved. In verse 46, the scripture says, And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Koinonia and fellowship happened on the regular at the homes. Koinonia, that's where they're investing in each other. That's where they're living life together. That was a regular occurrence at that time from house to house among the people of God. And that's how they knew each other's needs. That's where we broke bread together. That's where we prayed together. That's where we ate together. That's where we cried together. That's where we rejoiced together. That's where real authentic ministry took place. But when it came time to go to church, a whole different thing, a whole different purpose was for coming to church. The koinonia and the ministry was done and the needs meeting was done in the small house-to-house settings. However, the worship was done at the church. They didn't go to church to minister to one another. They came to church to minister to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And people did not take days off from church to go to the movie or to go shopping or to go visit their family and friends. When it was time to go to church, everybody went to church. And if you found that somebody in your group was not at church, Come on, brother, you need to come on out to church. Come on, sister, what's the problem? We're going to pray for you, but come on to church. They did it all together. They did it all as one. If Johnny didn't show up, you would go get Johnny and bring him to church. If Mary Sue was thinking about staying home with her pity party, you would call her up and say, come on to church. Let's get you to the church. And this was not a time for them to be concerned about all of those things that were carnal, but this was a time where they came in singing and they came in worshiping. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Do you realize when they came to the church, they went to the sanctuary in order to sit and listen, but they went to the temple in order to stand and worship. It gets to my crawl when I see people in the house of God doing everything that they're big enough to do when it's time for us to be collectively worshiping God. You are not so important and not too busy and not such a muckety muck that you cannot stand to your feet when it's time for us to worship God. I don't know who you are and I don't know how many business things that you're working on that you're just so important that you can sit down while the people of God are giving God worship. But God is not pleased with that. Worship is done together. Worship is done collectively. And if I said it one time, I've said it a dozen times. It is not the choir's job to sing you happy. It is your job to open up your mouth and and be out of tune as you need to be and sing with the choir as we all worship him. They worshiped together. We, we, we now, you know, for us, it's, you know, we're just going to sit here and look at them. You think you're going to sit and look at them in heaven? Amen. 
If you want to sit and look at them, heaven is not the place for you. Pat me on the back. Pat me on the back. Come on, put your hands together. Let's praise God. So fellowship was done in the homes, but worship was done at the church. And so this is where they would come through the door singing, I will magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. The Lord reigneth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. This was not the time to be important. This was not the time to see who was the big eyes or the little you. This was not the time to be concerned about any of those things because we've all come into his house to, and gathered in his name in order to worship him. I'm not concerned about how many money markets you have. I'm not concerned about what side of the town you live on. Doesn't matter how many bedrooms you have in your house because we've come into his house to magnify the Lord and give him praise. We're not concerned about what kind of car you drive. We're not concerned about how many you've got in your garage because we've all gathered in his name in order to worship him. We're not concerned about how important you are on your job and how many people are under your administration because we've all come together into this common place in order to worship him. We have come to worship Christ our Lord. Come on and put your hands together and let's give him praise. Welcome back. You do not want to miss the conclusion tomorrow of the message, Mine, Yours, and Ours. Please don't forget to like and share this message with your friends and family. I'm Deborah Phipps, and I want you to remember the sower sows the word, and therefore it is with the same measure you meet that it shall be measured unto you again. <laughs>